Morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us. We'll take a look at your work week forecast, a much busier work week forecast than we've had in a while. Um, as you can see, my voice is starting to come back. It's come back quite a ways, but I still have a bit of a thing in my throat, so I apologize for that as we go through things. Um, I will have several forecasts out this week. Basically today, I'll have one on Wednesday and Thursday as well, I think, as um, particularly our Thursday storm is going to be quite um, uh, impactful. Okay, so what's going on across the country? First of all, we have a very busy um, subtropical jet stream here that's giving uh, a lot of moisture into the area. Um, we also have, we're going to see it, there's a, a sort of significant cold over Canada, something we really haven't had for a big portion of the winter. That's going to help set the stage for some more significant snow uh, or frozen precipitation, certainly throughout the week. Um, we have a system uh, or some energy diving in across uh, far west, um, uh, western part of the United States, and also a little bit of a system here central United States. Uh, this system here um, is going to be headed in our way for Tuesday, uh, tomorrow. Um, it's going to bring with it some snow. This one's kind of minor, uh, but then as this and this kind of come together, along with the cold air to our north, we're going to get significant frozen precipitation on uh, Wednesday night into Thursday. It's basically the time frame for that. So um, as you look on radar, we do have a bit of a front moving through today. We could have them give us a sprinkle or two um, but most of this is not going to hit the ground. This looks much more impressive on radar than it is. Here's our system for tomorrow. You can see it's basically a clipper. It's going to swing through basically as a front and as a bit of a storm. Um, um, and I think it's going to be basically bring flurries, although there is definitely the chance for a snow squall. Um, and uh, we could get a little bit of accumulation. I have an accumulation map for you. It's not going to be anything too, too significant. Um, and then this system behind here, uh, combined with some moisture and some energy on the southern jet stream, is what's going to create our storm, our big storm, for later in the week. Uh, let's take a look day by day, basically, how we're going through things. So here today, this afternoon, 1 p.m., here's that front that's uh, mostly associated with low-pressure system well to our north. Here's the high pressure, the cold high pressure system that's uh, sitting over Canada. This is going to kind of sit to our north basically all week. This front, like I said, kind of swings through. Um, we're going to be warm today ahead of the front. Um, temperatures up in the mid-40s uh, for a lot of locations, below the mid-40s. Um, and like I said, we could get a sprinkle or two today with the passage of this front, but not that significant. Um, and then this system, which is well to our west, is going to race across and bring us with a chance for uh, light, uh, little light snow flurries um, and maybe a snow squall that could bring uh, some briefly heavier snow. Let's take a look at tomorrow. Here's our low pressure system. It is going to try to also, the other thing it's going to try to do, um, and yesterday there were some indications that this was going to happen a little more significantly, but I think uh, most of the models have backed off of that. I think that's an accurate thing. Um, it was going to try to redevelop off the coast. Sometimes clippers do that, and that can allow them to become uh, much more significant. I don't think this one is going to do that in such a way that it becomes a significant storm for us. Um, but both um, with this trough, which will give us a chance for some lighter snow, usually between these two low pressures when they're kind of transferring the energy, you get a bit of a trough kind of between them. That'll give us a chance for light snow. And then when the front moves through, um, it's kind of like not really a thunderstorm, but it's kind of like that where we'll get a quick burst of snow squall. Um, that's the kind of thing you want to be careful if you happen to be driving then. Sometimes if you're on the highway and you're driving then or something like that, not that we have a lot of highways ways in southern Vermont. Um, it's worth just literally pulling over to the side of the road for 15, 20 minutes because uh, you get whiteout conditions and conditions can go from basically just kind of damp on wet on the road to snow covered and uh, it's, it causes some of the bigger pileups and things like that often come from systems like this. So travel could be briefly tricky tomorrow after. That would be in the afternoon to early evening when that would happen tomorrow. So just want to keep an eye on that. Again, I don't think this is going to be a hugely impactful storm other than that, but if you happen to be driving later in the afternoon tomorrow, you just want to keep an eye out if all of a sudden it gets really really, really bad out, be prepared to just take, you know, take those 15 minutes. It'll pass pretty quick. The heavy snow at least will pass pretty quick. Go to the side of the road, take it easy for a minute, um, or make sure you back way off on your speed and you'll be fine. Um, as we take a look at Wednesday, um, here you can see we still have this high pressure. It's kind of off the map to the north. You see the southern part of it there, but it's pushing cold air in. And I'll show you a temperature map here um, at later on. And uh, the cold air, uh, actually, I don't think I actually did. Uh, put the temperature map in. But uh, basically, there's uh, minus 30s and 40s in Canada today. I, was, I didn't have enough time to give you that map as well. But um, 30, minus 30s and 40s, we're not going to get that temperature, but it is moving cold air across us. And it, by that point, the storm, as you just saw a piece of on Tuesday, is kind of coming together more here across the central part of the country, um, kind of surging some warm air north. Um, and with that is a lot of moisture. And when you hit the, when the moisture hits the cold air, it's going to ride up over the warm air and uh, it's going to give us some snow um, and just definitely a chance of some sleet, possibly some freezing rain as well. I think we'll stay mostly frozen for this, um, at least if trends continue right now. So as we take a look at on Thursday, by Thursday, primary system still out to our west. It's got snow to its north. Where that warm front was, it's kind of become a stalled front. There's another system kind of developing off the coast as the, the system transfers its energy way out to the east. 
And along that boundary layer, there's still kind of a frozen mix going on. Now, um, it's a little too early to know exactly how that's going to play out, but right now I would lean more towards snow and sleet with a little bit of freezing rain than uh, a lot of uh, kind of freezing rain uh, involved in this, but we have to keep an eye on it. Um, this is definitely a potentially uh, nasty setup, um, and really it'll be significantly impactful no matter what happens. It could fall mostly as snow, in which case we're going to get quite a bit of snow out of this. It could fall as kind of a combination of snow and sleet. We'll still get a decent amount of snow. Um, if it's mostly snow and sleet. Um, the most dangerous situation would be if it became mostly a freezing rain event, I think. Um, looks like more sleet than freezing rain right now. But if that were to happen, that becomes very problematic because it would be potentially enough freezing rain to cause um, not just problems on the roads, but also problems with the trees. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Um, like I said, right now, I don't think that's the likely scenario. I think it's more like a snow and sleet and enough to plow and a kind of a, it'll be heavy and not a lot of fun to move, but it will be, uh, that'll be what it is. Okay, let's take a quick look at the snowfall map for Tuesday. Um, like I said, on Wednesday, I'll have an update on the Thursday storm. Uh, Wednesday night, the Thursday storm, I'll also have an update on the Thursday morning, probably. Basically, for Tuesday, though, we're looking at an inch to two inches across the higher terrain of Sencha of the Greens. Um, valley location is just a coating to an inch, basically, west and east of the Greens. Um, as we head towards our five-day forecast, here's our light snow, snow shower. Today, we're pretty warm, mid to upper 40s in some locations. A couple of sprinkles in the afternoon. Again, I think these are pretty minor in their effect, but definitely a possibility for those. Tomorrow, temperatures are still a little bit warmer, although we're in a cooling trend. Wednesday, temperatures pretty close to average. Could Wednesday's one of our only days to see a quick peak of sun. I don't think we'll see a lot of sun. Friday, we'll also see sun. A wintry mix uh, starts anytime late, late afternoon, probably evening on Wednesday uh, through really all day Thursday. There's a chance of some precipitation. The heaviest probably comes overnight Wednesday into early Thursday morning, but then there's still certainly the chance for lingering. Maybe we change back to snow right now. I'm all just going to want to do that during the day on Thursday. So again, travel will be tough all day on Thursday and Wednesday night. And then on Friday, um, behind this, we do get a tap, some of that cold air from Canada. So after starting off around 30, mid afternoon, mid afternoon, we're in the 20s, probably falling into the teens uh, with some with a breezy wind on Friday. We could see some fun sun on Friday afternoon, though, as well. Let's take a quick look at your work week highlights. A return to winter this week, warm today. Tuesday brings some light snow. Thursday brings a significant snow, sleet, freezing rainstorm. Again, lots of details on that on Wednesday and Thursday. Friday ushers in much colder temperatures by the afternoon. So, like I said, a lot going on weather-wise this week. I know it's a busy week here with school vacation going on and all kinds of stuff. Um, I will be back on Wednesday and on Thursday, I think, uh, mornings with, uh, with additional forecasts this week. Um, if you want to make sure you don't miss any of those, you should subscribe to my YouTube channel. It helps make sure you don't miss any of them. Uh, if you want to make sure you get notifications, you hit the little bell next to the subscribe thing. That'll make sure you get notifications, push notifications on your phone, things like that. Um, also, I want to give a quick shout out to my patrons. They help support what I do here, and um, they also get some bonus uh, material, uh, content and things like that. So uh, if you're interested in becoming a patron and help support financially what happens here at the West River, River, River Weather Guy, go ahead and look, click the link in the description below. And uh, it will take you to my Patreon page, which talks about what it means to be a patron. All right. Thanks for joining me. Like I said, I will be back on Wednesday with an updated look at mostly we'll look at Thursdays, uh, the Wednesday night and Thursday storm on Wednesday. We'll be back tomorrow. Uh, I've got a lot going on tomorrow, so I don't really have time to get a forecast update tomorrow. But um, anyways, uh, I'll be back Wednesday.